We're making the perfect jumbo floor poof. Thing's really nice. <laughs>I wanted to make a floor poof for a really long time, but there was never the right pattern. So I decided to make my own and I am in love with this floor poof so much that I am calling it the perfect jumbo floor poof. It's great for any adult. I wanted a floor poof for an adult so that way when we sit on this thing, it is one, comfortable, two, we can feel like we're actually fitting in it and not trying to balance or falling off of it in any way. Oh no. This thing is great to sit on, super comfortable, and you can either sit on it, lay, use it as a pillow to prop yourself, like lay against, put it on, on your back so you can lay against it on your back. Oh, it's so comfortable, so many different ways to use it, and it's beautiful. That was also very important to me, was to have a floor poop that was aesthetically pleasing, one that I could put in my living space, my living room, and it would complement the space and not be distracting or odd. And that's exactly this. I put this in my, my living space and it's neutral, it's calming, it has that zen feel, but it also has this wow factor because it's so big. <laughs> it's big, it's beautiful, and it's just one of those things that you look at it and you're like, wow, that is really, really nice. So. That was my goal and it's super fast, super easy to make. I'm calling this an advanced beginner level pattern because all you have to know is how to increase stitches, decrease stitches and working around. The dimensions for this perfect jumbo poof is 32 inches in diameter and 10 inches in width here. Squishy. <laughs> I really like it. All right, so the pattern for the jumbo floor poof you can find about the description section and comment section below this video. All you have to do is click on that link, print off the pattern, be ready to crochet with me. Sometimes it's just nice to have that pattern next to you to follow along with so that way you know you're staying on track. The materials for the jumbo floor poof. I wouldn't deviate too much from the materials that I suggest to you just because this is such a specific project. You're going to need a pillow, a round pillow, that is 32 inches in diameter. I found mine at michaels.com. I don't know if you can find it in store. I haven't checked. I know I bought mine online. So I'll go ahead and make sure I have a link to this pillow in every material you see here in the description section and comment section below. So if you're struggling to find anything, all you have to do is click on that link to purchase the item and have it shipped directly to you. Make it easy peasy for you. So this is a round 32 inch diameter pillow. You're also going to need this jumbo sized yarn. It's loops and threads, chunky grande. This is a color neutral. You're going to need approximately, what did I say I needed? 320 yards or 105 ounces. 290 meters or 3,000 grams. Now why 3,000 grams is because it is the big stuff. You're gonna need about 10, 10 of these skeins to complete this project. The crochet hook that we are going to use to make this perfect jumbo floor poof is a 20 millimeter crochet hook. Now I like using this size crochet hook for this yarn because the stitches are just a little bit tighter but still loose enough to drape around the pillow. The 25 millimeter crochet hook that is recommended on the yarn label, the stitches were just a little too spread out for me. So I, I preferred the 20 millimeter crochet hook. You're going to need a pair of scissors, obviously, to help you out, and a jumbo yarn needle. This jumbo yarn needle has a really big eye that will feed the size seven yarn through it. So again, I'll have a link to this guy in the description section below under materials, just to help you out. Again, deviating, I don't think I would change the size of the pillow. If you want to get a different brand or buy it somewhere else, by all means. It's 32 inch diameter pillow. Yarn, it's a size seven jumbo. You can change the color. I really like the texture of this yarn, how it feels. I think it works up great for the space and as a decor item that's going to be on the floor. I think this works out great. So if you don't like this color, you can change the color up. If you want to try a different yarn because you prefer a different yarn, go for it. This yarn, I'm going to check out the material for you real quick. 
this fiber is 100% acrylic. So there you go. It says to hand wash, lay flat to dry. So what I would do if you make this floor poof, if somebody makes a mess on it, or you make a mess on it, you spill on it or whatever, uh, I would do the whole um, cleaning treatment, pat it dry and then let it air dry. It's kind of too big to put in a washing machine anyway. <laughs> but I think that's all the extra information that you might need to know. Once you have the pattern, you have all the materials you're gonna need to make the floor poof, let's dive right on into actually making the perfect jumbo floor poof. To begin the perfect jumbo floor poof, we are going to be working in rounds. I'm choosing to use the magic ring to start this project because I want to cinch that center of the circle as closed as possible. You can start with the chain two method if you want, or even the chain four method, though you may result in having a small opening in the middle of your project. Okay, so because this yarn is so jumbo, it's so thick, I'm going to start by having a significant tail, give myself some wiggle room in this process, drape it, drape that tail over my palm, take the yarn, wrap around my palm, come back up and form this X shape. See it has that X right there. You can even move that over more if you want a more pronounced X shape. Take your crochet hook, go underneath the first yarn, grab the second yarn, Pull it through. Make sure you keep a pretty good sized tail because as we're working in this loop, this tail is going to shrink. Going to go ahead and yarn over. Pull that yarn through the loop on my crochet hook for one chain. Gonna make a second chain right here. So yarn over, pull through the loop on my crochet hook. And we have two chains right there. That chain two counts as our very first double crochet stitch and sets us up for round one. Round one, we are going to make nine more double crochet stitches inside the ring. Or if you're doing the chain two method, nine more double crochet stitches inside the first chain that you made. Let's go ahead and work this. This jumbo yarn is has a little bit of a friction. So as you're working, you may notice that you're having to guide the loops over the crochet hook opposed to really being able to move this crochet hook a whole lot. This also will help with your tension, making sure that your stitches aren't too tight. We wanna keep everything loose. There we go. You'll notice this tail that once was really long, it's starting to pull, it's starting to shrink. So if you want to have this tail a little bit longer, pull the tail. This circle will shrink, but it'll be okay. We can still work in it. And you'll constantly need to kind of revisit this pull, work, pull, work. So take this first round a little slow. Make sure everything is getting comfortable. You're working the stitches up. So there is my second double crochet stitch. Need a total of nine. Go ahead and continue working your way around and I'll meet you at the end of round one to show you how we close round one and how we will move on to round two. Here we go for nine. Perfect, okay, so now I have a total of 10 stitches. The chain two counts as my first double crochet stitch and then nine more double crochet stitches resulting in a total of 10. What we're gonna do next is we're going to take our crochet hook and slip stitch into the top of the, or into the second chain of the chain two. Slip stitch to close round one. Here's what we're looking at. Pretty cool. Now go ahead and take this tail. If you did the magic ring, take the tail, hold your work back. I want you to see the hole though as I do this. And as you pull, that hole shrinks. And we want that because if we do that, 
then it has a perfect closure there in the center. No open hole, which looks really good. So I'm gonna keep pulling there. Great. Now what I will do is I'll go ahead and grab my yarn needle. Take care of this right off the bat. There we go. And I will secure it in. Now all of this will be on the inside of the floor poof, so it doesn't have to be pretty because no one will ever see it. But I just want to make sure that it stays secure and doesn't loosen up on us. There we go. Perfect. Then I'll come back. Even go through the string so the fibers cling or go through the yarn so the fibers clean. Hold a little bit back with my fingers. I'm going to twist it so it forms this X shape. Go under the bottom, through. Tighten that off for a slip knot. Perfect, and then we can just honestly leave the rest of the yarn there, leave it alone. It'll be fine. Now, that center is secure and we can confidently move on to round two. For round two, we chain two. One, two. That chain two does count as our very first double crochet stitch. Go ahead and make one more double crochet stitch in the same stitch we just slip stitched into. Great. And then for round two, all we are doing is making two double crochet stitches in every stitch space all the way around. You should end round two with a total of 20 double crochet stitches. Here we go. Oh, I am about to run out of yarn here. I was about to do stitch 19 and then 20. So let me go ahead and show you how I attach more yarn to my project here. Hopefully it'll help you as you are running out of yarn as well. So I have my next skein ready to go. I like to use what's called an invisible knot join. This is my favorite join to use. It works incredible. It's reliable. I use it on all of my work. Uh, if you have a different technique that you like to use to join yarn, use whatever you're most comfortable with. I'm just gonna show you this really quickly so that way it can help you if you don't really have a technique of your own. So take the yarn that is attached to your project that you're running out of, have it going this way. Take the brand new skein, take the end, have it go the opposite direction bud them up next to each other. Take this side right here, wrap it around two fingers. Take the little tail, wrap it around the two, over the two yarns, between your two fingers, right there. So that way it is coming out oh, towards your little fingertips right there. Pinch that. Remove your fingers, pull and form a knot on this side. You can pull that tight, as tight as you can, just to make sure it's staying strong and secure. Then we move our way over to the other side. Other two fingers, wrap the strings around those two fingers, take the little tail over the two yarns between your fingers. There you go. Grab that little tail, remove your fingers, pull, and that forms a knot on this end. So now you have two knots. Take the yarn attached to your project, the yarn attached to the new skein, pull, and those two knots come in on each other. 
and they actually form a very strong connection, a very strong knot. It's not going anywhere. Take your scissors. You can actually cut these tails close to the knot and it's not going anywhere. It is secure and strong. There we go. And then you can continue working on your project and this join is invisible. It camouflages in, it works great and you have nothing to come and address after the project. You have nothing else to just weave in, you're done. All right, let's go ahead and continue on. So this was my stitch number 19 and then 20. Perfect. I have finished round two. Slip stitch into the second chain that we made to close off round two. There we go. And this is what you should be looking at right there. Pretty cool. Round three, we're going to chain two. One, two. That chain two does count as our first double crochet stitch. The repeat pattern for round three is going to be increase double crochet in the first stitch, same stitch we just slip stitched into, and then make one double crochet stitch. And then two double crochet stitches, one. Two double crochet stitches, one. Repeating this pattern all the way around for round three. You should end round three with a total of 30 stitches. So remember this chain two does count as our first double crochet stitch. So insert back into that same stitch we slip stitched into. There's two. And then next stitch. one. Now, if you need a little help guidance finding where you're placing your stitches, make sure you're not placing your stitches in the back loop only. Try to find the stitch and find space so that way you have your two loops on top. One. two, one. And 30, great. Slip stitch into the second chain that we started with. One, two. Beautiful, great. Round three is complete. Moving on to round four chain two. One, two. Again, does count as our first double crochet stitch. Double crochet stitch into the same stitch we just slip stitched into to close the last round. There you go. There's our increase double crochet. And then we're going to make one double crochet stitch in the next two stitch spaces. one and one great and then the repeat pattern for row or round four is two double crochet stitches one one two double crochet stitches one one repeating this pattern all the way around for round four you should end round four with a total of 40 stitches here we go One, two, one, and 40. Great. Slip stitch into the second chain. Close round four. Perfect. Okay, we are on to round five. Round five, we will chain two. One, 
two counts as our first double crochet stitch. The repeat pattern for round five will be two double crochet stitches in the first stitch and then one double crochet stitch in the next three stitch spaces. And then repeat, two double crochet, one, one, one. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round five, ending round five with a total of 50 stitches. So here we go. First double crochet stitch will go into the same stitch that we slip stitched into. So there is our first increased double crochet stitch. And then one double crochet stitch in the next three stitch spaces. One. two, three. One, two, 50, great, slip stitch into the second chain to close round five, one, two, great. We are now on to round six. Round six, we're gonna start by chaining two. One, two, again, counts as our first double crochet stitch. Double crochet into the same stitch that we just slip stitched into to create that increase double crochet. And then we will make one double crochet stitch in the next four stitch spaces. One, two, three, four. And that is the repeat pattern for round six. So two double crochet stitches and then one, 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 one. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round six. You should end round six with a total of 60 stitches here. And actually, find my next stitch. There we go. So, one, two, three, four, and then next stitch, make two double crochet stitches. One. Two. And then one double crochet in the next four stitch spaces. Last stitch here, 60, great. Going to uh, rotate this a little bit. It's getting big now. <laughs> Slip stitch into the second chain to close round six. There we go. And we are now on to round seven. Round seven is our last increase round. So we're gonna start by chaining two. This chain two does count as our first double crochet stitch. Double crochet into the same stitch we just slip stitched into for our increase double crochet stitch. There we go. And then we're going to make one double crochet stitch in the next five stitch spaces. One, two, three, four, five. And then the repeat pattern is two double crochet stitches and then one double crochet stitch in the next five stitch spaces. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round seven ending round seven with a total of 70 stitches. All right, here we go. One. Two.
three. Four. Five. Last stitch for round seven. And that makes 70. Perfect. To close round seven, we will slip stitch into the second chain. One, two. Closing round seven. And we're moving on to round eight. For round eight, we will chain two. One, two. Again, that chain two counts as our first double crochet stitch. Now for round eight, all we are doing is making one double crochet stitch in every stitch all the way around. You should end round eight with a total of 70 stitches here. Now round eight is the only round where we just make one double crochet in every stitch. Starting in round nine, we will start decreasing and closing our floor poof. So this whole project works up really fast. So go ahead, real quick, take a second, finish round eight, and I'll meet you back here to show you how we decrease our stitches and start closing up our floor poof for round nine. All right, last stitch here for round eight and 70, perfect. Okay, slip stitch into the second chain to close off round eight. There we go, great. Now for round nine, we're gonna start adding decrease stitches to close the top of the floor poof. Start by chaining two. One, two. That chain two does count as our first double crochet stitch. Next stitch, we're gonna make the double crochet to tog. How to do this? We're gonna yarn over, find the next stitch space, insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through only two loops on our crochet hook, great. Then we're going to yarn over again, insert our crochet hook into the next stitch space, then yarn over and pull through only two loops on our crochet hook, so now we have a double crochet stitch started in this stitch space and a double crochet stitch started in this stitch space. Yarn over, pull through all three loops on your crochet hook, and that turns two stitch spaces into one. Great. Next, we're going to make one single crochet stitch in the following five stitch spaces. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we will make another double crochet two tog stitch right here, and then one double crochet stitch in the following five stitch spaces. That is our repeating pattern for round nine. You should end round nine with a total of 60 stitches. All right, here we go. One. Two. three, four, five, and then double crochet to tog. There's one, Two, yarn over, pull through. There we go. Okay, so at the end of round nine, you're only going to have four double crochet stitches to close out the round. So here's where I did my decrease double crochet, then one, two, three, four. Ugh, move all this around. And now I'm going to slip stitch into the top or the second chain to close round nine. Now, if you remember in the very beginning of round nine, we did the chain two. The chain two does count as our first double crochet stitch. And then we started the double crochet two tog in the very next stitch. So technically there are five stitches here. 
it would be one, two, three, four, and then the chain two would make five before we dove into the next repeat. Okay, so it does equate. <laughs> so now we are now on to round 10. For round 10, we are going to start by chaining two. One, two. Again, that chain two counts as our first double crochet stitch. Now the repeat pattern for round 10 will be double crochet, two tog, the first two stitch spaces together, and then make one double crochet stitch in the following four stitch spaces. And then repeat, double crochet, two tog, and then one double crochet stitch in the following four stitch spaces. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round 10, and you should end round 10 with a total of 50 stitches. Here we go. All right, so let's close round 10. One, two, here we go. Ready for round 11, chain two. One, two. Okay, the repeat pattern for round 11 will be decrease two tog, the first two stitches together, and then one double crochet in the next three stitch spaces. And then repeat, double crochet two tog, three double crochets, double crochet, two tog, three double crochets. Repeat this pattern all the way around. You should end round 11 with a total of 40 stitches. Here we go. So here's the first one. Already have a stitch in there. Next stitch space. One, two, and there we go. All right, closing off round 11, slip stitching into the second chain. And there we go. Okay, so for round 12, before we dive into round 12, let's go ahead and put the actual cushion inside our floor poof. And now we're gonna start closing the rounds in around the floor poof. So I'm gonna take my floor poof, I'm gonna lay it like this, you can already see where the walls are starting to close in. Here we go. Grabbing my cushion. Cushion. And I'm just going to insert the cushion in. Let's see if I can back up a little bit so you can see more of what's going on here. There go. There we are. Perfect. Make sure it's a little centered. It might seem a little bit big and that's okay. We will mold it around the cushion. Okay, so grabbing our crochet hook, making sure we didn't lose our spot here. Okay, so for round 12, we're now on to round 12. We're gonna chain two. One, two. Now the repeat pattern for round 12 will be double crochet two tog the first two stitches together and then one double crochet in the following two stitch spaces so one one then double crochet two tog one one repeating this pattern all the way around for round 12 you should end 12 with round 12 with 30 double crochet stitches so here we go next stitch over Two. All right, last stitch of round 12. Here we go, great. Okay, slip, stick, slip stitch into the second chain here. There we go. All right, we're gonna chain two. One, two, again, counts as our first double crochet stitch. We're going to double crochet two tog, the first two stitch spaces together, and then make one double crochet stitch in the next stitch space. And that is the repeat pattern. Double crochet two tog, one double crochet, double crochet two tog, one double crochet. Go ahead and repeat this pattern all the way around.
right, closing round 13 right now. Here we go. And we are on to our very last round. Round 14 closes up the whole perfect jumbo floor poof. We're going to chain two. One, two. Now the repeat pattern for round 14 will be to double crochet two tog every two stitches together. That's all we're doing. You should end with a total of 10 stitches and then we will be ready to close this off. There we go, guys. Last stitch. Slip stitch into the top of the second chain. And you will notice that there's still a bit of a hole in the top here. That's okay. Going to take our tail and we're going to weave in and out of these last stitches and cinch it closed. So grab yourself enough of slack of tail. Cut that off. We're going to yarn over and tie off our work right now so we don't have to worry about anything coming undone. Closing off that round 14. Great. Taking your crochet hook and we're just going to weave this tail in and out of stitches. There we go. And where we began, there we go. Okay, now we're gonna take our tail and cinch it closed. Perfect, great. So now we can take our tail and just kind of keep twisting it to close up the bottom here. I like to make it as tight as possible so that way I can more easily and then pinch it more easily thread it through the eye of my yarn needle. There we go, just enough to get a grab. Then I'm gonna take my yarn needle, making sure that this is as tight as I want it to be. Grab a little bit of yarn. There we go. Pop through, hold back some yarn going to keep twisting until I can see an X shape. Take my yarn needle, go underneath, tie off with a slip knot, allowing it to feed through smoothly so I can control the knot and where it closes. Perfect. Then I'm gonna just take this yarn needle, come through the work a little bit in between some yarn strands so the fibers cling to each other. Now this is jumbo yarn, so it's gonna be, oh, there's gonna be friction, so just keep pulling. There we go. Now I'm gonna take my scissors, cut the yarn flush with the project, and the, jump, the perfect jumbo floor poof is done. You may notice that there is a little bit of some slack here on the side. I preferred that, that way it wasn't so tight. It actually is very moldable. So when you sit on it, the inner pillow has room to expand within. Makes it very comfy. There we go. So cool. All right guys, so what did you think of the perfect jumbo floor poof? If you have any feedback or any questions at all, feel free to ask in the comment section below. 
I hope you had so much fun with this whole project and I hope you love it as much as I do. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already so you don't miss my future videos. Check out my membership program, see if there is a level that fits you best. I would love you to join. My Instagram page is all about behind the scenes projects that I'm working on right now and you get to see a little bit of what's happening behind the camera. If you liked this video, you might also love these videos right here. They're just more home decor videos I've created and you might have fun watching those. Also check out this video, which is a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys. <laughs>